was too excited. Okay, the overflow. We'll pray and start. Father God, I thank you for this time that we have together and just read your word and study it. And I thank you for the encouragement that you give us through this word. And I thank you that your word is alive and active and that it continues to speak to us and in new layers. Um, and we get new revelation from it each time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh my gosh, she disappeared. Who did? I had to go shut the door to the furnace because it's or the air conditioner because it's really loud. <laughs> I'm like, open your eyes and she's gone. Bam. Magic. Okay. <laughs> All right, now I'll share a screen again so I can go back to the verse here. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, the last time we stopped on verse 9 and 10, um, where it says, um, when we live our lives within the shadow of the Most High, our secret place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then can evil prevail against us or disease infect us? So that's where we left off that, you know, with where underneath that shadow, underneath the wings, um, he's already redeemed us from disease and um, sickness, so it can't infect, it, infect us unless we take it on. I mean, we can take it on, but we'd have to get out from underneath the shadow first. <laughs> um, so verse 11, uh, God sends his angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. And then on the other side... This one is NIV. It says, um, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike a foot against the stone. I guess I didn't read the 12 and the other one. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. So again, we we're talking about the angels. Um, we talked about them a couple verses back. That God charges angels over us, and I have totally the wrong verses up for the. Oh, I don't. Oh, I actually do have the right verse up. Okay, so it mine um, goes to thirty four seven, and it says the angels of the Lord stooped down to listen as I prayed, encircling me, empowering me, and showing me how to escape. He will do this for everyone who fears God. That is kind of a, a description of, you know, God charges the angels over us and um, where the angels are actually at our command. So it's kind of cool that verse is because they, it gives you a picture of as you're praying, the angels are like leaning in, listening for instruction on what to do. So I, I loved, I love that verse because it just gives you a mental picture of what God, people don't think, we don't think of angels as being, um, servants or waiting for our command but that's exactly what they are um, Matthew 4 6 and he said to them if you're really the son of man the angels will cha will catch you so they're waiting on us for it is written in scriptures he will command his angels to protect you and he will lift you up so that you will not bruise your foot on a rock and um, this one in um, I don't that was think. actually the words of Satan that just said yeah. that. Well, he was trying to he, use but he, he was Right. He correctly quoted it. The problem is he was trying to trap Jesus with it. Yeah. Well, um, Satan said, you know, um, yeah. I think the point of that is that if you misuse this ability to recall on the angels, then there's going to be a problem. That's that's. Well, the, the thing is, is that, is that um, he will command his, he, he has already commanded his angels to protect them. And he's already, they, they're at our, at our call. And we don't, a lot of people don't realize that. Um, Hebrews 1, 14 says, what role then do the angels have? The angels are spirit messengers sent by God to serve those who are going to be saved, which is us. I mean, we are saved. So, the angels are spirit messengers sent by God to serve us. And um, a lot, we don't think about that. We think of God, you know, them being heavenly beings and they're under God's command, but actually they, he charged them over us. <laughs> so, 
so we we can use them to to accomplish God's work. Because you know, eleven says God sends angels with special orders to protect us. And the other one says, for he commanded his angels concerning you, to guard you. So. I mean, he's still, they're still under God's command, but he's turning them over to us. So that's basically what's happened here. Yeah. He's turned them over to us, but they, they're, they're still there to protect us. Right. And guard us. Assuming that we remain in God's, under God's will. I mean, that's. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just a con of an angel, and I'm going to get rid of my enemy. Or you know, it's not the way it's going to work. But you think about it in the Old Testament, there was several um, instances, and that's probably what Tiffany's searching for. <laughs> but there are several instances where the angels fought the battles for them. I mean, you look, you think of um, different, like the oh, what is the the big army. The, the guy kept saying, well, we don't have enough people, we don't have enough people, and, and then um, he prayed, was it Gideon? Was it Gideon? I remember. Um, but he prayed and asked that his friend's eyes be opened, and he opened his eyes and seen a huge, massive army, and they were all angels. So, you know, this is happening all the time that we have the angels beside us um, fighting for us, and um, there was another, there's another one that comes to mind where, where somebody's prayer was delayed and Gabriel said that he had to fight Satan to get there because he was, you know, he was returning that prayer. So that the verse that says they lean in listening for instruction, you know, they're leaning in listening to our prayers <clears throat> and then they go from there. Then they go to accomplish it and then they come back. Well, I, I, I suspect that, I suspect I'm sure that it, you probably had the same experience as I have when something that's going to harm you and you get this like a voice or somebody saying something to you, you feel it, you know it. I don't know how it really works, but I mean, all I know is I, I remember one time when I driving along and uh, I've told you about this before that I'm driving along on the expressway, minding my own business. I'm in my lane. And all of a sudden, I see this car merge in, or it was actually a truck. It was a big truck. It was a big pickup, a heavy duty. And I watched him enter the the uh, lane next to me, and then I just got this feeling. There's a voice saying, "This guy's going to enter your lane," and I'm thinking, "If he does, I'm in trouble." So I immediately let off the gas, and as soon as I did that, that guy tried to get in my lane. I missed him by that much. I would have been killed or seriously injured at 70 miles an hour, had this truck, and I not gotten that warning. I mean, it's just, that happened. You have to believe that that was an angel telling me that. Sure wasn't for me. Oh. Yeah. I, She's on the phone, I think. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Her mouth well, was I guess, well, she's on the phone. Okay. I've been reading this book um, it's by Randy Alcorn. Okay. It's called Deadline. I've read his the third series in his book before because I didn't realize it was a series. And I was intrigued by how he writes because he takes a regular story of a regular person living their lives. And in the third book, it's a detective who is he's a lot like Sherlock Holmes, but he's really funny anyway. Um, but he takes that and he talks about that side of the life of that person. But then he ties in somebody who's died or somebody who's from their family in the past or a really close friend or something like that. And he ties in heaven and he writes about heaven and how heaven is and like how people in heaven might um, live and how they might be able to see us down here and, you know, praying for us and all these things. But in this book that I'm reading today, well, that I have been reading anyway, um, he portrays the angels like as a way I didn't ever really think about. Um, I don't know where the thing is that he talks about, but anyway, this guy, he dies in a car crash and he goes to heaven. And the first thing he sees when he gets there is the crowd of believers, the crowd of witnesses welcoming him home. But then in the background, he sees 
this angel and he seems to have this um, ability to recognize him but he's never seen him before and he doesn't know why well the angel comes up to him and talks to him and tells him I I'm your angel I've been with you since you were born like God sent me to be with you and to protect you and he talks about how the angel had been by his side you know always and it's just a really cool way that he portrays it but he talks about how like they have these conversations the angel and this other guy do they have these conversations about how the angel he understands a lot of things about heaven and where he was from and all of these little things but if the angel tells the guy he says you know more about god than i even do because you had a relationship with him even deeper than i'm able to and it's just it's a really cool thing how he portrays it so i would suggest this book but it's just it's given me a new um appreciation for the fact that god he gives us angels to protect protect us and then his word says that we have been made well the angels are even lower than us like we've been made above the angels and the angels even ask what is man that you are mindful of him like how can you look at these fallen creatures and look at these these sinful creatures and yet you raise them up and seated them at your right hand like that's several different things from the word, but it's amazing to me that God has given us these angels to protect us, but how many times do we forget about it? Because we've had several different times, like for me, I know for a fact, like when I um, wrecked my motorcycle, I never even touched the ground with my head, but my entire body hit the ground. And I have no idea how that happened, but God showed me one day that it was his angels protecting me, that his angels kept me from hitting my helmet or my head or anything else on the pavement, and that he protected me from harm, because I was able to get up and ride away, like it wasn't a big deal, but <laughs> like he talks about his word, how many times do we um, entertain angels and we don't even realize it? Like they're there for us. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about it that way. Interesting. Are you still with us, Rose? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was looking at that verse. It didn't make it quoted to him. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but God said that he made the, us higher than the angels. Um, mm. you, know, the, you know, so it's God and then the angels or God, and then he raised us up to be seated actually alongside with Jesus. Well, the, the, one thing you have to, right hand. the one thing you have to remember, though, is that the angels are, I mean, I have to assume that's the way it's working now, because wasn't there a division at one point, and now the, the angels that are on God's side are protected, or Somehow, I mean, I don't think the Bible actually explains exactly how that works, but um, so they're already set up, and it, it seems to me that that's where our protection is going to come from, is going to be from them, and that's the way the Bible said it, it happens, um, but they're already saved, but we aren't at this point, I mean, at a certain point, once we accept God, now he sends the, the, an angel for our protection. Yeah, I like uh, I like this in the this is a passion. This is, this is cool. Compared to all this cosmic glory, why would you bother with honey, mortal man, or be infatuated with Adam's son? Yet, what honor? you have given to men created only a little lower than Elohim crowned the like kings and queens with glory and ma and magnificence huh. now um, a little lower than Elohim is a little lower than God that's and that's what um, what was that about that? I, I never heard, I don't remember that uh, at all what, what verse is that again same verse that we just read, Psalms um, four and eight, four and five. Psalm thirty-four, you said? No, Psalms eight. Oh, eight. Excuse me. Okay. And I've heard that ver that that version again. That that um, this one says a little lower than the angels, which is the same thing. You just don't really think of it that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I you know because they are super beings. And, and they are spiritual. They, uh, I don't know if they actually fly. I mean, it, it, they transport somehow. I mean, it doesn't really matter to us, but they do have more powers than us. However, they're using those powers for our protection. Yeah. Under God's command. Mm -hmm. But I, I had this discussion with the teenagers at the, at the, at the uh, youth group, and it's, it's hard for them to wrap their minds around the fact that uh, God raised us up to be, I mean, he, first of all, he made us to be um, in his image. Right. He is sons. And then we were separated. But right. Jesus died on the cross. And when he did, God raised us up to be equal with Jesus. And that's, so that's why he says a little lower than Elohim, a little lower than God himself. Um, you click the footnote and it says this is the same Hebrew word used for the creator or God in Genesis 1 1. So God made us to be a little lower than himself. Um, and we fell from that. And then Jesus came and he raised us back up and it says that he seated us at the right hand of the Father. So that is why you know, the angels, the angels are servants to us because we're equal with jesus as far as god is concerned in the grand scheme of things and that's really difficult to get our mind wrapped around sometimes <laughs> well i mean you're jesus went to heaven we, we know that he ascended into heaven that's where we're going to as believers so that's and that from that light you have to understand that's where god is coming from that's where the bible is coming from we're all going to be saved just as jesus was saved I mean, in, in that sense, I mean, he was also God, but uh, that's probably why they're looking at it in a different way. I mean, or finding it hard to understand because Jesus was God and man at the same time. Um, so it, it, but the fact that Jesus is in heaven and he's waiting for us, anybody that believes in him, um, that kind of equals the playing field. Well, he said that he raised us up to, to be seated at the, I mean, Jesus was seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and then it says that Jesus raised us up to and and seated us at His right hand. So, I mean, that's you know when we think of like chain of command, for instance. So you got God as chain of command. You got Jesus, and then Jesus gave us the same authority as as Him. So we're equal with Christ, which people are like how is that possible it's like the chain of command he gave us his authority and that's i mean that's how what god created us for to begin with was fellowship with him and sonship well that's the way that started unfortunately we fell away i mean and you've got a lot of people that don't don't even acknowledge god um so mm -hmm. they're the ones that are lost they're the ones that will have to be saved One thing I think about when it comes to angels is like, well, I think about um, forgiveness or healing or any of the things that God has given us. It's, it's already been given to us. His forgiveness has already been given to us. His word says that his will is that none would perish, but all would come to repentance and come to know him. And of course, we know that that's not happening because we know that there are people who have died without knowing him. But it's always been there. His forgiveness, oh, when Jesus died on us, was for everybody. It's always been there. Right. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes with his angels. He's always sent angels to protect us. But the thing is, if you don't acknowledge that God has forgiven you, <laughs> then that forgiveness is null and void. Until you acknowledge and accept his forgiveness, then there's always going to be that separation. Right. So it takes you taking that step to accept it. The same thing goes for his angels that protect you and surround you. You have to acknowledge God that he sent his angels to protect you and put your faith in that protection before yeah. any of that's going to happen. I mean, yes, there are going to be times when God's angels are going to save you and you're going to look back and you're going to go, that was his angels. But when it comes to living our lives as Christians day to day, that's something that we can take authority over and say, God, you said in your word, you sent angels to protect me. I accept that. And I go out today knowing that your angels surround me, well, knowing that I will be saved yeah. and protected. That's an understanding that, that God made him uh, us and raised us up to be equal with Christ and have his authority is knowing his will and what he wants, but also knowing, um, you know, where we stand. I mean, if you don't know where you stand in the eyes of God, it's really hard to ask him in, in, for anything. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you've got to know um, where you stand. Um you know, and what 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 your authority you have been given, like Tiffany said, because of that word. Um, and it also comes into what it comes into play is that the Bible has said in a number of places that the the unbelievers cannot hear him. That's why we're here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the believers can, and so I I don't know how he transmits all this. I mean, if it's through the angels or directly from God, it doesn't really matter. It's coming from him. And we understand it because we are believers. But unfortunately, then that's why where the, the uh, disconnect comes in when you're trying to explain to people uh, how God, uh, why God protects some people and not others. And, and they'll say, well, why doesn't God do this? Why? Well, I, I said, for me, they're talking about themselves. I did, I'm a good person. I haven't done anything wrong, blah, blah, blah. I said, do you believe? Said, no. I said, well, how can you hear them then? That, 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 that's the thing going back to Psalm verse 1. You, you have to get underneath his protection. You have free will. So if you choose not to get underneath there and be in, in his presence, then um, then that's the, um, it's kind of your own fault. This is the verse. Yeah, that the key to his, the key to all of that is by faith. Because if you don't have faith, that you will be protected under the shadow of the Almighty. Right. And that you will have angels around you. And all of these things that we've been reading about, if you don't have faith and put your trust in it, I mean, you could read it and read it and say, oh, yeah, that's true. But until you have faith, it's, it's not going to happen. You have to have faith. Everything, that, everything of God works by faith. 
and yeah. always will. You can know in your head, oh yeah, this is what the word says, but until you believe it down in your spirit, it's just, it's not going to happen. Yeah, this is got a, it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You have to have that. This is a verse that Tiffany just quoted. Um, this is Second Peter um, 3, I guess I'll read 8. So dear friends, don't let this be this one thing escaped your notice a single day counts like a thousand years to the lord yahweh and a thousand years counts as one day this means that contrary to man's perspective now we got to remember that it's our perspective the lord is not late with his promises to return as some measure lateness but rather his delay simply reveals a, his loving patience toward you because he does not want any any to perish but all to come to repentance so a lot of times he's just kind of waiting and hoping for us to, to come to our senses <laughs> but yeah his will is that none perish it's, we it's, all come to know christ after, after reading that it just kind of popped into my head that um when you think about an era or a time in, in history that where we could reach more people faster than any other time is yeah. right now. And if, if mm -hmm. there's any indication that we're close to the end of the world, this is it. Yeah. Because we are able now to reach more people with more words. It, look at all the translations we have. We can put it out there with radio and internet and I mean, within seconds, go on Facebook and you could put something down there and hundreds, maybe thousands of people see that very message. Yeah. So if there's any time that we're, we're closer to the end, it's right now. Yeah. None mm -hmm. of us know for sure exactly the time, but you know, it's starting to look like we're- Well, it's that we won't know the, the exact hour. Right. Because we will know the season. Right. And it's obvious, you know, this is the season where I mean, we need, and we need to take every opportunity that we possibly can get to share the word and share that God does not want them to perish, that he wants everybody to be saved. You know, it's not his will for anybody to come to harm or die without knowing him, but, you know, he has given us free will and we have to make that decision and an indecision or a, a, a not choosing is choosing. I mean, you're either going to choose Christ or if you don't choose Christ, you've chosen the other way. There's no, two, there's not a third option. Yeah, there's, there's mm -hmm. they use that like for abortion. I mean, the uh, people of the world, you know, they'll say, well, I'm not for abortion, I'm for choice. But not making, putting that choice on somebody else is the same as allowing it in the first place. Yep, right. I mean, so, I mean but that's the games that the world and Satan we haven't mentioned Satan today, but yes, Satan's out there right against us, and he's going to try and fool as many people as he possibly can. He's going to make us look like fools or try, and and that's what we're up against. And and sometimes Christians become disappointed, or you know they're they're ready to give up. And I, and I, I would say to them that. You need to keep in the word. You need to keep recharging yourself. That's really, we're almost like a battery. We have to keep recharging. Keep oh, yeah. That word back into us and reading it and staying in it and connecting with other people that are in the word. That's the way we protect ourselves. One of the ways anyway. And that's why God has given us this word. He's given it to us because, I mean, and it's, we've been on this Psalm 91 for so long and then we connect it to other parts of the Bible and it's amazing to me how much is in this short book. It, it doesn't seem that all that long. And there's not a lot of words, but when you actually look into what is being said there, it really lays out a lot of what God's plan is. Yep. If you don't know what God's plan is, just read the Bible. That's where it's at. Mm -hmm. yep. and, 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 and the Spirit, as you read the Bible, and you read the Word, and you absorb what's going on there, and you talk to other people like I'm talking to you, Yep. the spirits opening it up and saying this is what god wants for you yeah well that's that's the thing like i said you got you have to know his will and okay. people people you know he says that he came to give us life well the life is not death i mean there there is they are aren't equal 
death is death and life is life. And if he came to give us life and give it more abundantly, then why would you think that he's putting all this sickness and disease on you to teach you a lesson? Because it's right. totally the opposite of what his word says. So it's extremely important that we get in there and learn what his will says and what, because this is his last will and testament, basically. You know, what he left us and his heart and his desires are in that book. Well, that's what some people were saying uh, about when 9-11 was said. They were saying it was a punishment from God. I said, no, oh, it, it was an act of evil, man. This yeah. was Satan's doing, not God's. Yeah, you got to understand God is good and, and Satan's bad. I mean, it's it's really, if I, if I, if I said that, that his gospel is so simple that a child can understand it. Right. So, I mean, it, it can be extremely, we make it way more complicated. <laughs> well, I mean, Jesus said, no, don't send the children away. Let them come to me. He knew, and he says, their faith is greater than some of you. Yeah. Well, and, you know, if a child should be able to sit in the church and be able to understand it, that's what Pastor Dave has always said. He said, if we didn't have children's church, it doesn't matter. The child should be able to sit in there and the word will still edify and teach them. And Tiffany and, and Daniel was, they had um, some children's church, but a lot of times they, they just sat in church with us because they didn't always have a children's church. And they, you know, they learned. They, they can, it's a, the word of God is alive and active and it's meant to be simple. You know, oh, he tried to, sure. to hide things from us. I'm sure the Spirit has something to do with that. The Holy Spirit has something to do with that, along with probably, possibly the angels. When, when you're born and, you, and your people dedicate your, you or whoever it is to, uh, to God, I mean, there is a connection there. We, we have to remember that. I mean, God's not going to just sit, suddenly pick up a, later on in life and say, okay, now I'm going to decide to talk to you. There's going to be a connection there, and that's and that's why we as parents, or well, in our case, godfathers, I'm a godfather, but I always took that as a special connection with that person that they said I was a, that my godchild. I know you don't believe in um, baptism for uh, children, but but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when I became the godfather. I knew and I felt a connection there. I mean, I remember one of my godchild. he was in the hospital and he was laying on this table in an ICU because he had two collapsed lungs. St. John's, a big hospital system said, we've never seen this before where both lungs have collapsed on a baby that was just born. So when I went in there in that ICU, I said to Zach and I knew that he was going to hear me. I said, Zach, we're praying for you and you're going to make it. And a nurse said to me, well, it can't hurt. I says, you better believe it. I said that to her. Yeah. I says, I know he's going to be okay. And I walked away. Yep. But that's, that's called faith. And then, and then, and is she saying something? Yeah. What did you say, Deb? I said, mom, screen sharing. I was going to share something. Oh, it's oh sorry. We have like four four minutes, so maybe security. There it is. I don't know why. It, that, okay, go ahead. Yep. Okay. Can you see it? Oh, okay. Yep. Except for we're over the. Oh, I gotta move it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is um. Well, I can't see this the scripture. It's Revelations chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. And this is in, it's called the voice translation. I really like the voice. It's similar to the passion, but it's a little bit different. But it says, I know your works. You are neither cold with apathy nor hot with passion. It would be better if you were one or the other, but you were neither. So because you were lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Ooh. That's Jesus talking. <laughs> yeah, you have to and that's... What? I said, yeah, you have to make a decision. I mean, that's right there. Oh, 
And it's, it's, you can't be one way or the other. You can't, well, I'm just going to go to church on Sundays and then live in the world the rest of the time. Like, it doesn't work. It, <laughs> you have to either be, because I like to look at it this way. The word says to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If he's the Lord of your life, that means he's the Lord of everything you do, not just on Sundays. Yeah. He's well, not I mean, just the Lord on Sunday morning. If God is there all the time, you don't ignore him six days out of the week mm -hmm. and only acknowledge him one hour out of the day, the whole week. I mean, that's uh, what kind of father would, or mother would want that, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. kid. Just listen to me this one hour the rest of the time you can ignore me <laughs> that's you know yeah we're running short of time so probably we should uh, say a prayer a minute so go ahead Jeff. okay father i thank you for your word and i thank you for the truth that we get to learn each time we do this and i just thank you for your angels that surround us and protect us and i thank you lord that as we learn these things that you could you give us continual revelation and more and more truth to follow after and to live by. And I just thank you for your truth about the angels and just about our authority and who we are in Christ. And I pray, Father, that you help us to know and learn more and more about all that you've given us and that we could take advantage of everything you've given us here on this earth. And I also thank you, Lord, that you are showing us that we must be hot with passion for you, to live for you with all that we have. And I ask that you would help us to do that, God. And if there's any areas where we're lukewarm, that you would show us. And I just thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.